The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who used to dress in purple and fine linen and feast magnificently every day. And at his gate there lay a poor man called Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to fill himself with the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even came and licked his sores. Now the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In his torment in Hades, he looked up and saw Abraham a long way off with Lazarus in his bosom. So he cried out, Father Abraham, pity me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. My son, Abraham replied, Remember that during your life, good things came your way, just as bad things came the way of Lazarus. Now he is being comforted here, while you are in agony. But that is not all. Between us and you, a great gulf has been fixed to stop anyone, if you wanted to, crossing from our side to yours and to stop any crossing from your side to ours. The rich man replied, Father, I beg you then to send Lazarus to my father's house since I have five brothers, to give them warning, so that they do not come to this place of torment too. They are Moses and the prophets, said Abraham. Let them listen to them. Ah, no, Father Abraham, said the rich man. But if someone comes to them from the dead, they will repent. Then Abraham said to him, If they will not listen either to Moses or to the prophets. They will not be convinced even if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, I am not sure if you had seen this uh, little video of a child, a little girl, who, has, who was blind or very poor eyesight, whom the doctors give something, uh, fix a kind of a spectacle on her, that uh, I think she's not even a year old. Suddenly she's able to see and to see the glow in her face and excitement in her face in seeing the world. Before, her world would have been a little uh, clouded. She could only hear the mum perhaps and her dad and her loved ones. But now she begins to see. Perhaps that was the start of a new life that she was living. Today, as we come to this 20 fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time, sorry, 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we are introduced to today's Gospel reading, Lazarus and the Rich Man. During my recent retreat there at Stella Maris, our preacher, Father Robert de Souza from India, preached using the Gospel of Luke, and he mentions that uh, it is not wrong being rich. Jesus does not condemn no, anyone being rich. But perhaps in the context today is this. We see the Pharisees who perhaps lived the gospel you know, of prosperity, thinking that uh, riches and all is a blessing and contrast it 
with poverty, with his akas. Perhaps too, he says, that uh, this particular text today was reading somewhere that mentions that why is this now, this particular gospel of the rich man and the poor man suddenly talking about the five brothers and all and the rising from the dead? Because Jesus did not address only the Pharisees. He also addressed the Sadducees who did not believe in the resurrection. So Jesus tells this parable. So we see today in this parable, this phenomenon. Father Jude at the beginning of Mass mentioned that today in this world, we are filled perhaps with uh, individualism, complacency and indifference. Individualism, complacency and indifference. Individualism, perhaps more than just individualism, today there is also an increase in racism. This morning, I, I believe in KL, in the Church of St. Francis of Assisi Charas, in collaboration with the uh, Pure Life Society, there was some awareness on ending racism. So I wonder whether Lazarus was of the same race as the rich man, or was he different? We are not told. But perhaps it's quite common for us here as Malaysians to see if there is an accident. Is that a person who met in an accident our race in order to go and help or not to help? Or there is a tragedy, somebody, something, some building fell here or that. Is it a local who died or is it a migrant? It appears that we begin to evaluate people in terms of race, in terms of religion, in terms of origin, in terms of background. That is perhaps our struggle today. So today, Pope Francis tells us that uh, in this message for this World Day for Migrants and Refugees, about building the future with migrants and refugees, or building the future, if I may say, together. We are not talking about the future just here on earth, but the future in heaven. Because Pope Francis in his message tells us that we are not people just here of earth. We are people also of the future in heaven. So as we build here and in heaven, the thing is, put it bluntly, maybe a migrant might be our roommate in heaven. Jesus says, there are many rooms in my father's house. Perhaps a migrant will be a roommate in heaven. What would you do? You'll say to Jesus, no, no, can you give me another room, please? Perhaps, you know, perhaps we have grown to become uh, not just uh, individualism and complacency, we have become indifferent. So, if I look at today's gospel reading, the sin of the rich man was not that he did something wrong to Lazarus in terms of deliberately doing something wrong. But perhaps his sin was that, like Father Jude mentioned, the third point, indifference. He did not even notice no, of that Lazarus at the gate. He didn't even bother to say, okay, the scraps that fell off the table to give it to Lazarus. That was the state of indifference that he left. The retreat master mentioned that uh, though the rich man did not even recognize, was so indifferent to Lazarus at the gate, the dogs were not indifferent. They came to Lazarus, seeing him there. And we are told even they licked the, the, the sores. So the dogs even responded in a different way, whereas this human being, this rich man, did not respond to Lazarus. So today, as we celebrate this uh, World Day of Refugees and Migrants, we ask ourselves, how do we treat the 
migrants in our country, there are refugees in our country. Of course, it is a new phenomenon that all of us are experiencing. Today, there are droves of migrants, perhaps running from Sub-Sahara Africa to Europe, from the Middle East to Europe, and different, different countries. We ourselves have closer to home, you know, millions of uh, migrants working in Malaysia. We have refugees from the countries around, especially Myanmar, I think, who have come here. What is our response to them? Are we just like the rich man, indifferent to these people? Are we called, number one, to acknowledge their presence, to recognize them with uh, a welcoming heart, with a welcoming smile? The point is this, that the migrant, the refugee, is created in the same image and likeness of God as you and I are created. There's no difference. Perhaps economically, culturally, in terms of social backgrounds, we may differ. But we are created in the same image and likeness of God. So thus, thus we are called to move away, perhaps from indifference, move away from complacency, move away from individualism and racism. You know that little child that was suddenly given that mirror, that uh, spectacle to see, sees the world anew. Perhaps uh, we, on the opposite side, we too need to open our eyes. Maybe we are living in bubbles. Just like the rich man lived in a bubble, we too are living in bubbles. The bubbles that we have during this COVID pandemic was the family bubble was good because that was one stage. But perhaps we have, we have built ourselves the bubble of a world that is so individualistic, a world that is filled with racism perhaps, and it goes on. We look at one person today who, like the little child, who put on the glasses, saw the world anew, who saw the world differently. And who was it? It was the Buddha. Being enclosed in his own palace, he did not see the world until he came out of the palace and saw the world. And that made a difference. Perhaps we need to let our bubbles burst so that we will see the real world as it is and respond not with racism or individualism, not with uh, complacency and just tirapa attitude or apathy or indifference, but perhaps respond with empathy. Our synod, huh? our synod, the message is about empathic listening. So the migrant that you, see, you and I see is one who is a family man, like you and me, is a family woman, like you and me, who has joys, who has pains, who has struggles, who has dreams. Yesterday, during the feast of uh, Saint Padre Pio, I read something to say, that Padre Pio's father, himself was a migrant, went to the United States, you know, to work so that his son could get education. Perhaps the migrants around us are that, looking for a better life. Without them, Malaysia can't survive. Let us learn to appreciate them. So the struggle, the process of getting to building this world together, our country together, it is a process that goes through, uh, it has got its own dynamics. We pray for the grace to build Malaysia together, build the world together, build God's kingdom together.